that we can you know, begin to think about in terms of solutions. Our, our public sphere is, is deplorable, is degraded. We need to bring back the culture of robust public conversations. Robust public conversations in which nothing is taken for granted with the, with the exception of the power of reason and reasoning. That we question things, we question people, not because you know, an idea is held by a particular authority, but because it fails or passes the test of reason. We used to be that kind of country. We need to have that kind of country back. And the second thing is about how we rebuild the Nigerian state, which is currently an apparition of the real thing. Those two projects, I think, you know, are mutually coextensive and, and can be pursued simultaneously. Thank you. Thank you. Any question you like of the remaining ones? Yes, I think I will respond to the third question. Uh, the lady that actually asked the question on uh, who is in charge or what should be done. Uh, I think uh, the reason why it's quite difficult to regulate religion in Nigeria is actually because of the uh, because of the marriage or unofficial marriage between the political class and the religious elites. Now, the political class actually need the religious elites for legitimacy because religious elites actually have access to the grassroots. Religious elites, I mean, if you can see in all elections in Nigeria, usually during the election, you will see political leaders moving from one religious institution to another. Why do you think they're doing that? They're doing that to actually give themselves legitimacy. So because of this interest that political class actually are from uh, in the religious sector, it's quite difficult for them to come up with a law or with regulation of religion. That's number one. Number two, another reason why it's quite difficult is also because of the sectarianism and the factionalism of religion in the country. Let me give a very good example. This is not a too good example, but I will, I will cite it nonetheless. When the incident of Pastor Biodo Fato Yimbo actually started. What did Khan actually said? The first thing Khan said is we don't have jurisdiction over that particular church. They actually said that it's under PFN. Is it PFN? Uh, uh, sorry? PFN. And PFN. But PFN as well, they couldn't actually take any decision on Pastor Bion Fato Yimbo. Now, Wayne Khan actually intervened eventually based on the public outcry. What did they do? I mean, they couldn't really do anything also because, I mean, there's so many issues there. So, the factionalism, the factionalism, Catholicism, if you look at the Christian faith, for example, there's so many uh, denomination uh, and uh, uh, ideation of the Christian thought. If you look at the Muslim circle, there's also so many sectarian dimension as well. So in the midst of all of this chaotic religious marketplace, how then do you create regulation? Lastly, uh, Governor Erufai in Kaduna actually made an attempt to create a state bill regulating religion. But when he made that attempt, what happened? There was a public outcry. People felt that their right, freedom to worship, freedom of religion, freedom to free expression will actually be censured. So there's all of this legal, sociocultural, political factors that have actually ended religious regulation in Nigeria. But I clearly share your concern as well, uh, but I don't think that concern is actually going to be addressed anytime soon, as long as the milieu we are operating in is still the way it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, sadly, we, we've run uh, 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 low on time, and I'm under instructions to stop a, a, a in good time. Um, and I also want to still remind you of, of the details of these books. So um, I would just like to say that I did promise we'll end on a note of optimism. I think the the the. the subtext of everything that's been said here is that Nigerians, and particularly religious Nigerians, have been taken for a ride. Uh, in health, I'm in, I'm in public health myself, 
and we say that um, uh, education is a vaccine. And I think it's the same situation. It's an immensely complex problem, which is why we don't really have an answer to that question of how do we solve this problem. It seems to be a, a self-perpetuating cycle. So I think one of the first things, it's not short term, definitely, but one of the first things is to educate people so that they're a bit resistant to being uh, brainwashed. In a session I was at yesterday, uh, uh, someone uh, was talking about the Boko Haram uh, girls who were kidnapped and she said um, she was talking to one girl and the Boko Haram had convinced the kidnapped uh, uh, girls that uh, they had taken over the world. They were in charge, they were running the world. And uh, a number of the girls were so uneducated, they just simply took that as, as the truth. Whereas the girls who had even just gone to primary school, they just understood enough about the world to know that it's not uh, some uh, guy who came to kidnap you from your dormitory who's going to be part of uh, the people running this world. So I think, uh, to, like I said, to end on a slightly optimistic note, I think one thing is going to be we have to educate our people so that they don't get uh, brainwashed by our religious leaders. So to wrap up then, um, we need balance in our lives. You've all been buying uh, creative fiction and maybe some non-fiction, but this is one non-fiction book you have to have. It's even a reference book, highly detailed, very well indexed, and uh, it's the sort of thing you need to be when you listen to the news or you get into a conversation and you find yourself as you, you run back home, you pick it off the shelf and you go and you look up uh, whatever you need to about uh, Boko Haram and their doctrine. Uh, so it's called the Boko Haram Doctrine by by Abdul Basit Kazim and Michael Wangpa, and uh, it's available outside. Get a copy, get it signed. Uh, from uh, Prof. Ebenezer Obadari, we have Pentecostal Republic. Highly readable. Its uh, subtitle is Religion and the Struggle for State Power uh, in, in Nigeria. Again, highly informative. And if you are religious, I had a conversation with somebody once who gave me the touch not my anointed line. If you can give them a few facts from this book, they will want you to touch their anointed. <laughs> so on that note, please, can you show great appreciation from this wonderful gentleman? Please give this wonderful panel a rousing round of applause. Thank you very much, Alao Kusho Inka, Jabrin Ibrahim, Ebenezer Obadare, and Abdul Basit Kasim. Thank you. So please take your group photo, and then you're going for your in-